Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are about to start our uh, session of endovascular intervention. Uh, you all are requested to kindly have a seat, please. Uh, this session is of 90 minutes, and it includes three talks and one live case. <clears throat> First of all, I will request the panelist to the chairperson to take their seat, uh, Professor Tariq Kashraf sahab. Please have your seat. Uh, Professor Arsalan. Dr. Ahmed Shakir. Professor Hikmatullah Jan. Professor Nihat Kelly from Turkey. Uh, Professor Kazi Tofail, Professor Navidullah, Uh, I and Dr. Suhail from NICUD will be moderating this, uh, this session. Uh, it includes three talks, and the first talk uh, will be delivered by Professor Nihat Kale. He is an interventional uh, cardiologist uh, and who uh, is a magician in peripheral intervention. We have seen him live, and he will talk about uh, premier in endovascular treatment of iotoiliac disease. Please. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, there is some uh, technical issue, so I will uh, request pr Professor Elmes to, to come and uh, deliver his talk that is critical limb ischemia saving the limb. And we will have a 10 minutes talk each. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, first of all, thank you for organization committee to invite us here. We are very happy to be here together with uh, our colleagues. Uh, can you share my slides? <coughs> now today I will try to summarize you critical limb ischemia. It doesn't work. It is not working. Okay, you know, peripheral arterial disease has a advantage of uh, clinical scenario, and I cannot see here. Ah. Should I give you mine? Ah. Okay. And as you know, uh, the most severe form of uh, peripheral arterial disease is uh, critical limb ischemia. It is about 10% uh, of the patients can be seen, and its definition is presence of chronic, that is longer than two weeks of ischemic breast pain, or presence of ulceration and gangrene attributable to vascular disease. Uh, it's a high rate of uh, mortality and complication rate. There have been several classifications that we have used. Fontaine and Rutherford were the most common ones previously, but recently wife classification, which is uh, want, presence of ischemia or foot infection, and they have categorized uh, into three stages, uh, has been advocated now. Uh, the level of ischemia is measured by ankle pressure or ankle pressure index, toe pressure or toe pressure index, and uh, transcutaneous oxygen pressure difference. There are some uh, machines for that. Uh, toe pressure is uh, measured by a small cuff, uh, and transcutaneous uh, oximetry uh, measurement uh, gives about uh, healing probability of the uh, ones also. Uh, want, uh, wife classification includes want fr uh, from nasal to ext extensive depasser, ischemia fro. Uh, you see the uh, levels there, I will summarize later on. And uh, foot infection from no infection to systemic inflammatory disease process. So, in short, in the presence of uh, pain and ischemic findings, or in the presence of gangrene, ulcers, or nail atrophy, 
uh, a short, softer level of ischemia is defined as critical limb ischemia. As the severity of uh, ischemia increases, uh, the uh, probability of uh, revascularization and the benefit of it uh, decreases and the amputation rate increases. There are uh, several uh, stages for that you, you see here, and from uh, several randomized and randomized non randomized trials, we see that as the stage increases, uh, amputation rate increases also. A number of specific factors appear to drive distribution of lower extremities. Uh, women may be more prone to femoropeptal disease. Uh, age and diabetes has been associated, been, uh, associated with uh, distal uh, arterial uh, stenosis, but there are some uh, alterations also. Uh, usually, multi-level of uh, arterial occlusive disease is uh, required for uh, CLI, but, uh, such as SFA and profound arterial together, or below the knee, two or three uh, vessels together should be occluded, because there, are, uh, there had been some uh, collateral between the arteries, as you know. In the clinical suspicion, first we will have physical examination, cold uh, extremities, uh, if it present uh, ulcers or wounds, uh, absence of passes, then uh, we will have uh, ankle pressure, brachial index, or Doppler waveforms. Uh, ankle pressure in the index may be normal or increased in the presence of calcified, non-compressible arteries. Uh, therefore, uh, normal values should, uh, shouldn't uh, let us that there is no ischemia. Uh, toe pressure is more sensitive for that. In calcified arteries, uh, that within the normal range of ankle break index, toe pressure or uh, tissue uh, Doppler examination gives more infor uh, information us. Then we will have uh, imaging modalities, Doppler ultrasound, CT angiography, MR angiography, or Diagnostic cutter angiography should include uh, DSA, digital subject angiography. Uh, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, Doppler is, a, uh, is widely available, inexpensive, but highly operator dependent. Uh, CT angiography has the disadvantage of uh, radiation and uh, contrast agent, and uh, it is interfered with the classification. Uh, MR angiography. Uh, tend to overstimulate the stenosis, and I don't trust them uh, usually. Uh, catheter angiography should include DSA. Uh, 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 machines with that DSA are uh, usually uh, don't, doesn't give uh, enough information below the knee, especially. Uh, it has the disadvantage of radiation and contrast agent. Also, it is uh, invasive. Uh, carbon dioxide can be used in patients with high risk of uh, nephrotoxicity, but uh, image quality is decreased by carbon dioxide. What is the goal? The goal of CLI treatment is to relieve the pain, allow heart healing, improve patient's function, and prevent limb amputation and reduce mortality. Those patients have high comorbidities. Therefore, uh, robust reaction of the cardiovascular risk uh, should be uh, aimed, not just leg, but uh, we should also uh, improve uh, our life survival. Uh, many patients require opioids for analgesia. Routine analgesics are usually not enough. It requires a team approach. There are so many uh, interventionalists, infectious disease department, endocrinologists, orthopedics, plastic surgeon, wound care department, psychology, physical training, etc. It, uh, it is not an uh, easy process. It takes times, uh, months to heal a wound, and uh, that's a uh, hard situation. European Society of Cardiology favors uh, surgery first in many patients in the case of availability of uh, appropriate saphenous vein. Uh, if there is no saphenous vein or uh, there is increased risk for surgery because of comorbidities, then endovascular first. Uh, approaches uh, advocated, but uh, in many centers with experienced operators, interventional therapy is also first uh, choice also. Basil study is the only multi-center randomized uh, control trial in patients with CLI. It is uh, in the middle term. There is no uh, great difference between 
uh, surgery or uh, interventions. But during the long term, surgical uh, therapy has the advantage of uh, longer pat patency. Uh, but recent two meta-analyses uh, revealed no uh, significant difference between them. Therefore, each case should be evaluated uh, itself uh, case by case. What are the advantages of surgical revascularization? It has a uh, high durability and the patency. It requires suitable vein. Perioperative risk of MI and other complications are higher than uh, intervention. Surgical wound healing can may be uh, probable in some patients. They uh, take the uh, saphenous vein, but uh, for one of my patients uh, suffered from wound healing for six months. That's a uh, uh, terrible condition. Uh, usually, uh, surgeons have one vessel target, just femoropopital uh, 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 surgery, but sometimes multilateral bypass is necessary. Uh, sometimes we, uh, after enough communication, have hybrid uh, approaches, for instance, iliac stenting and femoropopital bypass. Uh, common femoral artery and its bifurcation are usually absorbed for surgical approach. We shouldn't use profunda. Profunda artery is a safety uh, for leg. If you lose it, then we will uh, lose the collateral and we uh, lose the uh, leg. To, uh, to choose the best vascularization te technique, it is mandatory to have adequate knowledge of the vascular tree and inflow and outflow of the uh, food. Direct uh, inflow uh, is better for one tailing, but uh, sometimes we have just one, uh, one of the uh, below the arteries open tent uh, because of the collateral, some patients uh, uh, take benefit from uh, even with one vessel. Uh, it, uh, it is a debatable condition. Uh, patients have high comorbidities, as I mentioned before. Angioplasty is uh, relatively simple to com uh, simple compared to surgery. It doesn't require analgesia. It may be done in the presence of similar comorbidities, which surgery is not suitable. Uh, stage approach is possible. We ca can perform the uh, angioplasty in step five patient, uh, especially in uh, patients with high risk of nephrotoxicity. Uh, it can be repeated. It can be an alternative for bypass failure also. Even in the case of risk stenosis, that time uh, of, uh, between the opening of the artery with angioplasty and till reocclusion, wounds may be healed. So therefore, there will be no problem if there is no resting pain. Angiosome concept has been advocated, but there are some debates for that. Uh, concept of wound related artery is important for wound healing. If you directly open the related artery, uh, then wound will uh, heal uh, more uh, uh, faster, but uh, sometimes uh, it is not probable. And uh, especially midfoot and hindfoot are uh, related with that wound healing, but uh, the uh, marginal branches may be supplied by uh, different arteries, so opening of even one vessel may be enough for wound healing. There are some classification systems uh, to predict the probability of the uh, in intervention. Uh, one of them is glass stage. This, uh, this is a long session, I, I just want to uh, show it. Uh, if the uh, stage increases, uh, you uh, first, uh, your first wish uh, will be uh, open bypass, uh, but uh, in some patients there are some uh, gray zones. Uh, therefore, that should be a team approach. You will uh, discuss with surgeon and, and the in interventionist, cardiologist or radiologist, and uh, and also discuss with the uh, patient and uh, give a shared decision for which uh, procedure should be evaluated. For instance, in that patient, you see there is no palmoplantar arc. So uh, if you revascularize with uh, surgery, uh, the probability of healing uh, will be lower. Uh, and with angioplasty, with a simple method compared to surgery, 
palm plantar arc is uh, reconstructed and the wound is healed. Again, you see uh, here is a retrograde approach uh, from dorsalis pedis puncture and uh, AT anterior artery opens uh, in a simple fashion. But sometimes some patients, uh, they should be moving uh, a, mo a video. Uh, in that patient, uh, iliac, at the iliac level, uh, at otoloctogenes and uh, following collateras uh, is not enough to perform uh, the distal uh, perf uh, perfusion. Uh, continue, please. The next slide. Uh, even there, will, uh, there was no uh, uh, artery at the below the knee. So in those patients, uh, maybe uh, primary amputation may be advised. And that patient uh, was uh, an intractable pain, and uh, we have sent him to al algology department, and after that, primary amputation is advised. In such non rascuration patients, uh, there uh, are some uh, methods. In Turkish, we say, if you are in C and you are going to uh, drop, uh, then you hug a snake. Uh, I don't know the item in English. Uh, sometimes, uh, in desperate conditions, patients uh, think about some uh, spiritual uh, methods. Spinal cord stimulation, lumbar septectomy, intermittent compression are not class one uh, approaches, but lumbar septectomy is especially associated with relief of the pain. And hyperbolic oxygen therapy, uh, I have worked in a hospital uh, which has the facility of hyperbolic oxygen therapy, and I witnessed that uh, patients, especially those diabetic and want uh, or ulcers, uh, they, uh, they benefit from hyperbolic oxygen therapy. Uh, this is uh, last year's publication. In patients with collocation, revascularization with inter uh, endovascular revascularization had higher amputation rates. This is a retrospective study, but it, it gives some uh, doubts about that. Should we revascularize patients or not? If you look at the uh, other risk factors, age, diabetes, COPD, tobacco use, they are not, hazard ratios are below the, uh, are, are within the normal range. Just on nervascularization history is associated with above four hold uh, increase in uh, amputation rate. Therefore, whether revascularization interventions causes increased rate of CLI or those patients are uh, in high risk of revascularization. Okay. Okay. Uh, the goal of treatment of patients with CLI is not only to uh, have a functional lip, but also to re uh, reduce cardiovascular mortality. Uh, I just opened the leg vessel. That is not enough. We should have enough uh, cardiovascular risk reduction. Uh, also, we should stop in the case of heart suspicion. If uh, we have in the lo losing uh, risk of losing collaterals or uh, profundo femoralis artery, uh, which may further threaten the leg, we should stop there. Another important consideration is to avoid risking uh, risk potential of bypass crest. If you uh, have stand uh, below the uh, PT seg uh, P3 segment, that is the uh, distal SFA or just in conjunction with popliteal artery, there will be no bypass uh, probability later on. In short, the choice of revascularization technique should be examined case by case according to anatomical lesions, distribution of vascular disease, comorbidities, presence of ulcer or infection, and local expertise and availabilities. Salvage of live and infect, salvage of the patient requires multidisciplinary team and proper cardiovascular risk reduction. Thank you for your attention. Uh, also, we invite you to uh, APIC in Cappadocia, Turkey. Uh, this is a uh, peripheral intervention meeting. We will want to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. It was a great talk. Um, I, I really like uh, the, the take home message that you gave is that when it comes to the CLI, critical limb ischemia, and it takes a village to treat those legs. It's not a job of like your interventional cardiologist only. You need to have a team of interventional cardiologists or IR 
vascular ultrasound guys, podiatrists, wound care specialists. Yes. So, so this is something that um, you know, we should definitely do. My question is, if you have a patient who is end stage uh, CLI and you don't have any good targets, so you cannot re revascularize, do you guys do DVA or deep venous arterialization in, in Turkey? Uh, or or Turkey, sorry. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. we don't have any uh, experience like that, but uh, in the literature it has been uh, advocated in some recent uh, papers. Uh, venous, uh, veno arterial communication with laser therapy uh, salvaged some patients, but uh, the, it is not sufficient yet. No. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, next, we are going to invite uh, Nihat uh, if his uh, presentation is ready. And he will talk about aortoiliac uh, disease and you know, intervention. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank the organization committee for this invitation. I think this kind of uh, organization will contribute to, to uh, broader country uh, to cooperation. Uh, I will, uh, I, my topic is aortoiliac intervention. Uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of uh, co uh, peripheral case in uh, our clinic practice. Uh, for this patient, uh, the peripheral uh, artery disease is so important, both mortality and mortality. Uh, for this patient, diagnosis is so important. Uh, uh, for diagnosis, uh, we use the clinic and uh, parameter. Also, antibiotic index is so important for this patient. Also, we, we need to use uh, ultrasonography. Uh, so important equipment for both diagnosis and treatment for this patient. Also, we need to use uh, BT angiography. Uh, for example, uh, we cannot see the distal feeling in some case, uh, for example, uh, especially aortic uh, iliac occlusion. In some patient has uh, aortic aneurysm. We can see this uh, parameter in the CT angiography. Also, uh, MR angiography helpful in some, some patient. Uh, angiography is a gold standard for me. In nowadays, we use carbon dioxide angio, especially high nephropathy risk patient. Uh, treatment uh, option, uh, medical treatment uh, should consider each, each patient. Uh, uh, all patients, also exercises, uh, we advise exercises to all patients, and some patients, we need the uh, revascularization. Yeah. Uh, I listed the all step in peripheral intervention. Uh, we will discuss, discuss uh, each step in the following slide. Uh, if you want to achieve uh, High success rate, you should have perform anti growth and retrograde intervention, especially our iliac intervention. Uh, crossing is so important step is uh, all peripheral intervention. Uh, crossing techniques depends. Uh, Crossing techniques depend on many factors, for example, uh, economic situation, uh, operator preference, uh, also available device. Uh, I, I made some uh, animation for crossing technique to show my clinical practice, but it, it changed the operator uh, according to operator choice. In generally, uh, if you subtotal occlusion, for example, below the knee, SFA occlusion, you need the 014 wire. Uh, this wire may be filter, filter, filter XD, PT2, pilot, regali. Uh, you can use this wire, uh, subtotal occlusion. Uh, but if you have total occlusion, you need the more stiff wire. Uh, you need the stiff wire for penetration or the crossing the lesion. Uh, I, I use this wire uh, in many cases, for example, Astoto, uh, uh, highest penetration force, uh, has, Astoto has highest penetration force, also you, you can use uh, uh, Halbert wire, 0, 14, 18 wire, and uh, Gaia wire.
sometimes uh, internal crossing uh, may not be possible. Uh, if you plan the subintimal crossing, uh, you need the uh, hydrophilic wire and microcatheter. For example, Poseidon Roadrunner wire. Uh, uh, firstly, uh, you need the penetration, the proximal cap, then microcatheter and uh, hydrophilic wire. You need to make loop your hydrophilic wire. Then, if you push the wire quickly, many times uh, your wire enter the distal lumen, will enter the distal lumen, and then you need the long wire. Yes, if you have a uh, unilateral uh, total occlusion, uh, what is the most proper approach for this lesion? Uh, if your iliac, is, is, iliac distance is uh, sufficient, uh, you can use uh, crossover technique. Uh, but iliac, in iliac osteal occlusion, such as this case, uh, best approach is antegrad approach. Antograde approach uh, will ensure uh, strong backup and good Im uh, image quality. Uh, and uh, sometimes you need to retrograde. Retrograde uh, approach advantage is uh, good position for stenting. Uh, and sometimes in any rupture, you need the graft stent. Uh, for graft stent implantation, uh, you uh, your access should be retrograde because nine or 10 French uh, access you need. Uh, retrograde uh, approach uh, sometimes uh, necessary, uh, but you should be so careful because uh, you, you have high re uh, subintimal uh, crossing risk, especially uh, 0, uh, 35 wire easily went uh, go to subintimal area. I will show you uh, one case sample, uh, this topic. Yeah, for example, this, this case. Yeah. Uh, there is, is now a uh, healthy area, proximal iliac segment. Uh, actually, most proper approach, antegrad for this patient, but uh, other center uh, tried the retrogradly. You can see why uh, went the subintimal area. Second intervention, again, uh, retrograde intervention, again, subintimal area, aortic subintimal area. Uh, third intervention, crossover, but uh, crossover is not possible for this patient because uh, no health area proximal segment. Yeah, uh, we uh, perform this intervention antegradly. Antegradly, we cross the lesion 0 18 wire, uh, then uh, stenting. Yeah. Also, you can see proximal dissection, proximal iliac segment. Uh, keep a wire other side because uh, sit, during the stenting, you can lose the other side. Uh, many times I put a, a wire other side. Uh, if you, in some cases, uh, you can see iliac, uh, bilateral iliac stenosis. In this patient, you need the kissing stenting. Uh, for kissing stenting, uh, we use balloon expandable stent in many patients, but in some cases, you have a long segment lesion. You, you can use self-expandable long stent for kissing stenting. Yeah, another case example, unilateral occlusion. We cross to this lesion, uh, Halbert uh, 18 wire. Uh, uh, after the other side, uh, because of other side uh, lesion, uh, we perform the kissing stenting with balloon expandable stent. Last image. 
I mentioned uh, the previous slide. I think most important step is crossing in peripheral intervention. Uh, our aim is intimal crossing. In many cases, uh, it should be first aim the peripheral intervention because subintimal crossing means uh, rupture risk, uh, side branch loss risk, and restonose risk. Our aim so uh, intimal crossing. Uh, 0 18 wire is good option for intimal crossing. This is long uh, ili uh, iliac occlusion. This is halberd wire. You can see move, uh, movement of the wire intimally cross the, the lumen. Yes, uh, after the uh, crossing, uh, standing uh, step. Yeah, other option, other case. Yeah, okay. Retrogradly crossing uh, the Halbert wire. Other example, uh, retrograde crossing. Halbert wire, this wire. This wire many times uh, go in intimally after the stenting. Uh, intimal crossing uh, sometimes uh, may, may not be possible. Uh, in this case, we need the crossing the subintimal uh, with hy hydrophilic wire. You can see hydrophilic wire crossing subintimally. Uh, you can see loop uh, shape of the wire. After the subintimal crossing, main problem is side branch loss. Uh, you can see internal iliac problem. Uh, we put the self balloon expandable stent for internal iliac artery. Uh, we used the gladius halberd wire in uh, many cases. If you uh, uh, intimal or subintimal crossing uh, pos uh, impossible. We use to cart and reverse cart for cart technique uh, for shortly animation. You need the antograd and retrograd wire subintimal area. Then retrograd balloon uh, inflation uh, according to vessel size. For example, iliac segment uh, six or seven millimeter uh, balloon you can use. After the balloon duration is in, you can create a reentry two subintimal area, then many times antegrad hydrophilic wire easily cross and enter the lumen. After the uh, crossing, uh, manual snare, I used manual snare for this case, uh, externalization and uh, stenting uh, steps. This is a lurish case. Uh, antegrad, uh, we cannot uh, cross the antegradly, retrograde uh, balloon inflation, then Antigrad uh, hydrophilic wire cross the lesion and the manual snare. We externalize the wire. Other example, uh, antigrad also a crossing fill. Balloon dilatation uh, and remove the wire. Then this is animation. Yes. Uh, if you, after the balloon dilatation, subintimal result uh, and flow dissection, this dissection we use to stent, but uh, also pressure, gradi pressure gradient is important factor. If you, if optimal uh, result, uh, balloon is maybe enough. Aorta iliac occlusion may be most challenging problem in aorta iliac uh, occlusion in peripheral disease. Uh, uh, I have totally 80 patient experience, Lurish case, aorta iliac occlusion. Technical success, 100%. Uh, uh, iliac rupture, three patient. Renal embolism, two patient. Subacut occlusion, in, uh, two in two patient. And one death. Uh, sometimes you, you can see suboptimal, uh, subtotal aortic occlusion. In this lesion, you can use great stent, balloon expandable stent, or self expandable stent. In this patient, we use the self expandable stent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is there animation for Lurish case? Uh, you need the three access, uh, brachial and 
and port femoral. Uh, you, you can perform syrup technique for this patient also uh, other option kissing stenting uh, with self expandable stent this is lurish case uh, leg occlusion alt, uh, six months later sometimes uh, proximal cap may be sensitive you need the sensitive wire in we use uh, the back side of the uh, wire for penetration Renal embolism and as an important problem for Lurish patient. This is renal embolism. Embolism, we, uh, we ha had to put stent uh, right renal artery. Yeah, I, I will show you some case, last. This is last case. So close to renal artery, there is no uh, cap, proximal cap. We cross to uh, Halbert wire anterogratically. This is uh, Halbert wire. Yeah. Cross the right side, but uh, le for left side, we need the CART technique, uh, balloon dilatation and uh, six point balloon dilatation and externalization, kissing balloon. After the balloon dilatation, we put the stent, uh, kissing stent, uh, proximal segment, simultaneous kissing stenting. Uh, many times, eight, ten. After the uh, balloon dilatation rupture, you can see rupture, we immediately put the graft stent, uh, B graft stent. This is final image. Yeah. Yeah, this is final image. This is BT angiogram after the intervention. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we are uh, uh, holding uh, intervention uh, peripheral congress in our center for uh, five years. In next in next year uh, also we will we will hold uh, peripheral congress. Congress. We are waiting you uh, to our congress. Thank you for attention. Thank you. The one thing that, um, I mean, it's a great, great uh, demonstration of your skill set, uh, but I would, you know, strongly advise uh, when you attempt iliac uh, intervention, make sure you have a cover stand available yeah, in the yeah. lab. Mm. I mean, if you, do, if you do it enough, you will see iliac, you know, per perforation that's at yeah, some yeah. point. Uh, just for the sake of time, we'll take some mm. uh, uh, questions later. Uh, can, yeah. you, can you announce the next speaker, please? Our next speaker is Professor Sungun Raha, who is online with us from South Korea. Uh, uh, Professor Raha, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? He will be speaking about the management of <clears throat> superficial femoral artery disease in lower middle income like Pakistan. Can you hear Dr. Ali? Can you hear? Yeah, Professor Rai, we can hear you. Okay, sounds good. Good to, good to see you, Dr. Ali uh, and okay. everybody. Thank you very much. See him here. Okay, uh, can you see my slide? Uh, not yet. We, we, we are seeing you, but not your slide yet. Okay. How about this slide? Uh, can you see? Uh, uh, wait a minute, please, sir. Uh, yeah, we, now we can see, uh, see your slides. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Okay. okay uh, 
Can you see it in presenter view? Uh, can you see? Uh, yeah, no, it's clear. Uh, can you see? Yeah, we can see you, uh, your slides clearly. Okay. Uh, but uh, can you see the, uh, the whole screen or the just partly? Full screen. Yeah, full screen. Full screen. Okay, okay. Thank you. Be because of time limitation, uh, already delayed the uh, session time. So um, I will try to make it short of my presentation. Uh, this is uh, actually uh, uh, not a uh, un uh, unusual title for me, uh, an unexpected title for me. So I'd like to. Uh, Try to adjust this uh, request to title for your uh, organizer. Uh, I'm working for uh, diverse of our Korean society, including uh, overall, I'm mainly working for the complex intervention, including coronary CTO and the peripheral uh, intervention, and then mostly. Uh, uh, actively working for uh, many research work together. And uh, I'm a complex guy, uh, not a simple, mostly complex. Now, lost more than 20 kilos after COVID-19. Uh, I think we have some technical issue. If the panelists can sit uh, in front row, it will be easy for them to see the slides. Oh, uh, you cannot see the slide? No, we can see it, uh, but uh, we have some people on stage. Uh, you please continue your presentation. Okay. So, uh, basic equipment for the SFA in, in general in our country, we are using diverse of, uh, uh, approaching technique uh, with the diverse French size uh, according to the different devices. However, as I uh, re uh, the reply for the, this uh, title, uh, we should consider the cost effectiveness strategy for the low and mid income uh, society. So, it means that uh, overall, this title, I should make it simple. The procedure should be simple, and it should be associated with the smallest number of devices we should use, and, and that will be related to the shorter procedure time, time and less, less contrast using uh, radiation hazard. That will be good for patients and uh, Hello, uh, patient family and uh, good for physician and uh, assistant. So the contractual approach, uh, definitely the, the, we try to pursue just a single approach from six French uh, contractual sheets and the isolated and approach, I will try just the five French short sheets because most of the balloon, simple balloon angioplasty and the uh, finalizing with the DCB, uh, with 18, this is the 18, uh, 18 wires for the iliofemoral uh, uh, intervention. Most DCB will be enough for the five French sheets. So five French ipsilateral and six French contralateral. Uh, that will make it simple without the atherobulation or the more complex device of the uh, the uh, uh, arthro ablation and the plan modification device. Uh, supporting catheter, I can say that we can save uh, the micro also uh, in, in our country with the, uh, even the reimbursement strategy. The, uh, uh, saving micro catheter will be cost effective strategy. So I will prefer. Uh, angio catheter support uh, wiring. So, five French or, or four French uh, angio catheter support, especially the multiple purpose, is good to targeting the, the CTO stump and the supporting. Then you can use the introducer to prevent the back bleeding, then ATC wiring for the iliofemoral CTO and just the simple wiring. You, if you fail to recanalize by the CTO wiring under the uh, angiocatheter support, just to remove this 
and uh, quickly insert the 3.5, 1.5 J and the uh, angled J thermo wire and starting the submit menu class without the micro -cathode. So conventional technique, you are starting micro catheter support, uh, any micro catheter in 18 and 14 CT wiring, then if you fail intraluminal, then remove everything, then insert the angio catheter, then starting the uh, 3-5 angioplasty by subintimally. That will take time and losing contrast and radiation hazard and will take more time and not so cost effective. I prefer to single micro the single angel catheter and single uh, uh, one or two CT wiring, then switch it to the sub interact tracking. That will be cost effective. And for the wire selection, the 14 for the PTK, 18 for the uh, iliofemora CTO, uh, I'd like to recommend for the uh, best strategy. But just a single one or two, your favorite CTO wiring and wire selection depends on the, your experience. Actually, BTK CTO, I prefer to start with the command ES that will not penetrate going outside to the vessel advantage here because of the hydrophilicity. Tip load is adequate for 3.5 gram and the 18 connected flex or the hybrid. Uh, this, this is shaped to support this better than connected flex, and this is will uh, penetrate outside. Uh, hydrophilicity is good and good uh, uh, trackability, and the, the selective uh, uh, repuncture or the tip control is good uh, with the start wire and other intermediate tip load. Uh, you can then use everything, so just one or two uh, good experienced wire you can try, and if you fail then just to switch it to the retroid puncture and just to one single good best support to retroid wire you can select or command to the retroid BTK or the VAT for the BTK or the SFA. And wiring technique is also important. Technique and expenses can save the money. So uh, it's better to uh, make a good a fantastic curve and uh, manipulation of the tip shaping to uh, achieve the high penetration success. So it, it, it's difficult to explain and you need your experience. And I will not use this kind of uh, CTO device in the middle income country. We have many expenses the front and center from the beginning and true pass diamond drill, uh, virus crossing. I will skip all of this case. Uh, sometimes beneficial, however, uh, you cannot use any device at this country. And the re-entry device for the sub interval tracking failure, and then I can use uh, any re-entry device, off-road and the uh, uh, Pioneer and NTR, but will not use this. And the plan modification, you can use some cost-effective carimbal angioplasty and some selective case, low stent zone in the defemoral application by Hawk one, the ISR diffuse plug modification by jet streaming, a simple, most focal calcium balloon on, on direct ablation. You can use this external piercing technique, the destroying the calcium by your puncture needle on the femoral puncture needle. And then you can do the balloon expansion. Uh, you cannot use all the expensive device as some selective, focused, not positive, uh, costly uh, device. Just this calcium is our uh, really strong enemy. Everybody agree of this. This heavy calcium, uh, uh, not dilutable this lesion, and also with a uh, worse outcome. So sometimes in current and capacity, and the scoring balloon, uh, focus the force angioplasty. This can help. Uh, sometimes I'm using this focus the balloon angioplasty and the calling balloon and the angioscope, scoring balloon, atherectomy. But we cannot use that everything at the, so just a simple, uh, maybe I can use the calling balloon and just a high pressure non compliant ballooning and just a DCB. That will be cost effective strategy. Some selective BTK. This is also can be cost uh, expensive. I'm, I'm not sure, but sometimes uh, some rotable case we can modify into the piercing technique. And rotarex is organized from by we can get help. 
jet stream in diffuse ISO case like this. Diffuse ISO case, uh, uh, this is a really a debugging is needed after submitting tracking. Uh, or the total occlusion, the super ISO case. Uh, this is a hopeless case. However, the, after the, the debug the small balloon and the jet streaming, and immediately after jet streaming, you can see this nice debugging effect. So nearly into my hyperplasia degree is less after the jet streaming. And then just the validation and the DCB and good, nice, nice result like this. So sometimes this can be cost effective because the recurrence will be less, then uh, you will save the, the, the repeat intervention. The balloon for the PTA, this red is a DCB. So the just nothing leave behind the strategy and that strategy for the joint area, then will be a, associated with the reduced uh, re-intervention incidence that can be cost effective. The uh, avoiding maximal effort to, to the stenting will be uh, also with cost effective strategy. So, SFA cases, all the DCB available in your country, they will be good for patient. The Lutonix and the Razor DCB is a, a less uh, fatigue for the patient, 18 system up to 200 millimeter, just the two or three this is entire. SFA and the uh, PAM detail will be good. And the uh, really, really poor balloon response and uh, not candidate for the DCB. Anyway, we can do the uh, drug distancing, like uh, Illuvia or the Zero PTX. So sometimes the beta stenting, uh, spot stenting of the DCB or the primary DES, sometimes we need. However, we should try to avoid the stenting except the iliac region. Uh, sometimes the focus pass tenting the classified area with the spera after DCB is needed. So my conclusion for the cost effective trade in the mid income area, this is with the last two slide, uh, more elaboration of value in the past, at least two to three minutes with adequate size. And I would finalize with the DCB. Uh, in Korea, one Pamnitia DCB and SFB3 can be reimbursed. So calcified really top IS lesion and plan modification and debulking, scoring balloon, and I would finalize the non-compliant ballooning and real finalization with the DCB. And no stent zone anyway, we definitely should uh, not stenting. So that will be okay. And heavily calcified, uh, anyway, this calcium uh, we should uh, maximally uh, ident uh, idealized uh, with the uh, uh, debugging and the, 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 some bail out situation, super that can be the uh, uh, Poor balloon response, uh, no way except primary DS. This is a uh, current our SFB strategy, especially cost effective strategy for the mid income media that I, I'd like to suggest. Thank you for your attention. Uh, th thank you, Professor Raha, uh, for being on time and uh, delivering a very comprehensive lecture uh, uh, in short time. Uh, please uh, stay with us. Uh, we will ask the question. Uh, now we are going to uh, Rolpin Institute of Cardiology for a live case. Uh, uh, I think they are connected. Can you hear us? <laughs> Hello? Can you hear yeah. us? Uh, we we cannot hear clearly. I think we can and we the, can hear you. Just your volume is a little down, I guess. Okay. Uh, so why don't we uh, start with with the case case presentation? If you guys give us uh, some history, what's what's going on with uh, this patient? Okay. First, I want to introduce our team. Yes. I'm Dr. Alhan from Turkey. And um, with my uh, colleague, uh, 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 and a great team here, uh, we appreciate the organizing committee, Dr. Bashir Hanif and Dr. Atum, for uh, this invitation. And uh, Dr. Atum will present the case right now. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, uh, this is a 52 years old lady, and uh, uh, she uh, presented to us with my, uh, his uh, systemic symptoms like fever and myalgias for the last two years. 
and uh, pain in both arms on exertion for the last one year. That is interpreted as education, and it was more pronounced when she uh, runs the arms uh, above her head, like combing or uh, doing some uh, household work which involved raising the uh, uh, arms above her head. And uh, her right arm was most, most symptomatic. On examination, both the radial and radial pulses are barely palpable. And uh, we did her uh, workup, and uh, her autoimmune profile was uh, negative, but her ESR and CRP was raised, which was 50 millimeter of, uh, which was 50 millimeter in one hour. And uh, uh, after that, uh, she consulted with the rheumatologist, and uh, she started her on steroids and immunosuppressive drugs. And uh, now her CRP is normal. Her arterial Doppler has been done, which showed uh, mild peripheral arterial disease. Then we proceeded with the CT angiography, and uh, that also showed bilateral splenic artery stenosis with the left axillary artery uh, spleen stenosis. And uh, after that, we had also performed our uh, uh, arteriogram, and shows uh, a long segment of severe disease in the right subclavian artery with a total occlusion uh, uh, followed by total occlusion. And uh, then that cross fails uh, about uh, after uh, about uh, 50 millimeter distance through collaterals, and there is also a long segment of severe disease in uh, the left subclavian artery, which is extending into the axillary artery. Uh, um, now we are uh, starting our case, and uh, uh, we have uh, sorry. Uh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can you see it? Can you see We can't hear you. Can you speak, please? Can you see the angio images? I cannot hear that. Uh, can you see the angio images? Yeah, we can see you, but we can't hear you. No, no we can hear you as well. Can you describe uh, the... the uh, this is the first picture, as you can appreciate the disease process is beginning from the vertebral artery part. Uh, the the disease probably it's not a it's not an atherosclerotic disease. It's fibrotic tissue. We think uh, this is a vasculitis patient. Uh, next next slide. We took these uh, images and this is the last image. As you can see, axillary artery occlusion and reconstitution of the vessels uh, in the uh, high artery. Uh, I want to show you our setup. We did femoral puncture. We placed a, a 9 centimeter destination sheet to the proximal subclavian artery. And we cannot palpate the radial artery. We prepared ultrasound for puncture radial artery if we are not uh, from above for crossing. Uh, but I want to discuss which technique or wires uh, do you advise us? We prepare something. Uh, can you change my earphones? I cannot hear anything. Can, uh, uh, can, you, can you hear us, sir? Can we have the comments of the panelist? Uh, we have Professor Navidullah, Professor Tariq Ashraf, Professor Hikmatullah Jan, uh, and uh, Nihar Kelly, and Professor Elvis. Can you comment, please, uh, how you will do it? Yes, I will do it. Are they discussing Mike. Sir, we cannot hear you. Uh, are you discussing the uh, some options to treat this patient? Uh, yeah. Can you hear us? Uh, we are taking the opinion of our panelist, uh, Professor Hickman. Uh, they are 
going uh, integratedly. Uh, if there is the vessel distal is not visible, I think one can also simultaneously do a retrograde injection from the brachial or uh, radial ulnar artery. Maybe the lesions, because of the lesion, the flow or the pulse in the arm may not be uh, good enough, but brachial, with the help of the ultrasound, one can locate and uh, you can see the retrograde flow to the integrate flow and we can then find out the true lumen of the vessel because the vessel seems to be totally blocked after these uh, first few centimeters where they look like uh, ectatic at this is uh, the rest I think they, they are using it the micro catheter or they are injecting but the distal part of the vessel is totally not visible. So it will be dangerous to go without a retrograde injection or if you don't see the track uh, distal to the tip of this uh, catheter which we see. We placed uh, the supracore wire in the lesion. Uh, approximately we have a tapered cap. But as you can see, uh, we have a nearly blunt head below. We can uh, try both of them, retrograde or integrate. Uh, our first aim is, if you agree, we can uh, try it from above. Yes. Uh, we can. We have never cross catheter here through the 0.35 inch support catheter, and uh, we want to begin with a 0.14 inch guide wire. Pilot 200, maybe the first question. Oh, do you have any advice for the choice? We do not have how uh, unfortunately, we can use pilot 200. So, so you don't have any uh, dedicated <laughs> preference <laughs> CTO wire, like Halberd, uh, Estato? We have Gladius here, do we have Estato? No sir, we don't have Estato. We have, Turf, we have V14, V14. Uh, pilot, uh, we have these wires here. Only V14? Uh, V14. I, I'm uh, concerned about uh, making a knuckle and go sub into mouth. Uh, I know V14 wire is a good wire and exchange length wire. Uh, I want to begin with a uh, softer wire, if you agree. 200, pilot 200, and afterwards we can uh, escalate the wire. Yeah. So so plan is and uh, we can, uh, we have also prepared the radial site and uh, if we need it then we can uh, go retrograde uh, but uh, first uh, we have uh, decided to go anti-grade uh, with the help of pilot 200 and these wise. So uh, you, I you think I, I think the lesion C2 lesion is not that not that long so I think we have a good chance for anti-grade. Hopefully they will open it under it. But otherwise, we have very good option for retrograde with un, uh, puncture under uh, uh, ultrasound guidance. So regarding wire choos choosing, um, I would prefer uh, here, um, you know, the wire like Gaia series or Halbert would be very nice if you have it um, rather than Pilot 200. It would be my first choice, one of them. If, if they take a, a film, they film this uh, scene without DSA, uh, take a longer uh, projection, long duration of the scene, one can probably see the distal artery uh, reconstituting through the collateral. Sometimes we can see that vessel. It seems to be like one here, but I'm not sure whether this is the auxiliary artery or some other artery. But if you take a long ejection with a normal radiographic angiographic uh, projection, then you can probably see distal part of the vessel. So, uh, Dr. Omar Ghat, can you, uh, you will go for intraluminal wiring, no, no extra luminal. Yeah. So, for sure, since this place is not a good place for stenting, I would prefer to do all the balloon angioplasty here. No, for intraluminal uh, yeah, That's why I like to go into luminary, yeah. Okay. What do you think? I think I totally agree with you. Uh, I mean, we should always start with anti-grade first, and uh, that should be always the number one attempt. And then we have to look at the cap uh, cap uh, pathology as well. If you more have a convex 
uh, cap, the anti-grade always is a good idea. So as you can see, the proximal cap is, uh, you know, convex, uh, you know, concave. Uh, you know, so uh, this this might be a good case to uh, try anti-grade. No, anti-grade, intraluminal, uh, I mean, of, true luminal. Of, of course, intraluminal should always, always be the first option. Yes. If it fails, then we can go. Then we can go to the second step. Uh, if, you, if it goes, you know, intra, you know, extra, extra luminal, we can try to re-enter, you know, distally. Yeah. But intraluminal should be the first choice. Yeah, because we don't have distal re-entry uh, devices in Pakistan, especially yeah. for the peripheral uh, vessels. If there is no yeah, more question, uh, we will. Uh, please go ahead. How you proceed? Yes. Does anybody go first from retrograde for this patient? So, Artan, uh, Artan, you choose pilot 200. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, guys, we have the options of pilot 200 and Gaia third. If you agree, we can begin with Gaia third then. Yeah, because there are side branches there, so your wire will go easily side branch. So I prefer to Gaia third if you have it. It's to Gaia third line. Can we see the sheet? They have already taken. Yes. Okay. Can you do me? We advance the nanocross catheter here. Remove the wire. Yes. And. Uh, Place the uh, coronary marker catheter as the mother and child take it into it. Introduce the cola, gun cola. Because we, if we uh, cross, uh, we, maybe we cannot advance the peripheral catheter. Uh, 0 for 15 inch uh, caravan. caravan. So we will do mother and child technique for this patient. So, the, the only. Caravan. Uh, <laughs> thing I have about going through the groin and integrate is that if it is a taller person, do you have long enough sheets and then the balloon shafts to reach uh, all the way down there from, from the groin? So that, that's something we need to keep in mind as well. Uh, I am afraid about uh, not uh, crossing the uh, navigator's catheter. Maybe it may be tough, I don't know. Because we are thinking that it's the fibrotic tissue. Which which wire they are using in our Gaia third? It will and take Gaia third, uh, yes. Uh, 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 can you make it bigger? Zoom in. Do you want to give the sh shape to the wire? Yes. Gaia third wire. It's three shape. Yes, it is three shape, but uh, yes, okay. Let's see left side. Can you feel it? This is the biggest image. Maximum zoom? Eh? Can we have a torque? Move on for torque though. The left side of the person. Those research Can we change the angle a little bit? In that time, you can see better proximal stump, maybe. It's then. Yes. It's in AP position. Which position do you advise? Try to answer all the Okay. They're not are in a contrast. Yes, this is 20 cc contrast. You can take it. Cannot see the result. 
digital vessel. Digital vessel. Yes, it's, 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 yes, it's, it's, release the table. Release the table. Release the table. Yes. Good. It just rope making. Control, control. Rope making. Is it ready? Yes. Thoda sa door door hai. परेशान ना होना आई थिंक नाउ ए वी हैड गॉन यस दैट सी इट both are 150 craig walker so it is coming back let's take we jihad mustafa is part of the union so the nsc as we all part of one group here um we do that in wall we've been doing it for 25 years what can you the new cardiovascular horizon yes we are back it's nice yes this one is contrast Uh, exchange length wire. Do you want to make a? Or for the next, uh, the other cat lab. Are they with us? Uh, we are live. Yeah, okay. yeah, you are live. We, we are listening and seeing you can clearly. So, what exchange wire you are taking? Take to the stuff that we are in front of now. Uh, now we are taking a 300 centimeter V14 guide wire, and we will take peripheral balloon catheters and do stepwise dilation. If you agree. Okay. We so so the, we do not the plan is they will exchange the wire. Uh, they will take the long wire and uh, remove the micro catheter, and they are uh, planning to stepwise balloon dilation. I think it's um, some collaterals. I think wire in the uh, bullet. Uh, uh, okay. Control above, above. Do you have to take a fourteen wire? We want to begin with three O balloon catheter. Uh, which balloon is that? Three uh, O into. It's Minerva, I think. Okay. Okay. Let's just place the balloon. Can you? We took the balloon there. Will you? Three the balloon. Three. Uh... Three all balloon catheter over the wire. Where is it? And here, here, Minerva. Yes. We have three o by fifteen centimeter over the wire. Balloon catheter, Minerva Medical. And we will begin to dilate. No, can't. You cannot hear them again. You cannot hear them. Uh, cannot. Center is here. Center where is it? Let's go. Ah, uh, take. Take. Take it, take it. Okay. We cannot hear them. Sir, can you hear us? 
Yeah, we can hear you. So, so now you have taken three O balloon. What is the yes. length? Taking three O by one fifty balloon, Minerva. What is the length of balloon? Yes. Yes. Let's see. Oh, the fiber wire. Let's take a picture. Where is the landing zone? I think I should do it. Do not want to dilate the health segment. Yes, yes, yes. I think no, we are in the collateral. Vessel. Yes. It's another vessel. That's what I was saying. Right? Yeah, probably you are in collateral. Okay. Yes. Let's dilate here. Can you show the stereo part? Stereo, stereo. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay. in a side branch. Now it's in the right place. So, uh, six. Six. Six is nominal. So, uh, will you do uh, prolonged inflation uh, of three minutes or five minutes or just inflate and deflate? This is not a DCP. We are not Maybe for the last size, we want to dial it with 5 0. Uh, maybe it may be longer, two, two or three minutes. We here DCB, plain old post. Definitely. You can see the tip of the catheter. Can you show the tip of the catheter? While they are doing this in a balloon case, they might take their time. So I've seen it, as you can see from the audience here, we don't, uh, that's one thing the PAT is very underappreciated, underdiagnosed. But if you look at the number, even if you are more than 50 with diabetes, the incidence is as high as like 30%. What do you guys do to educate people and get more referrals from your, like your primary care physician and get people aware of this disease? So do you guys do anything different in Turkey? Yeah, right, in Turkey, we do, as cardiologists, we do peripheral um, uh, intervention, uh, but most of the time we find our patient our patient, ourselves, you know, somehow peripheral patients um, are not deferred to us. Either we, we, we have patients with uh, diabetic wound, diabetic leg, or rarely we have some, uh, some claudication or other indication. So I think, you know, if someone interests uh, peripheral, and if they want to f the, um, have the patients, it's better to uh, scan their own patients because our patients, as you said, have also peripheral disease. So I think the best source of uh, having uh, peripheral patients uh, from our patients, yeah. coronary patients. Uh, I think uh, if you guys can uh, give us, you know, final shot as soon as possible. We have another live case that we would like to start in the next uh, few few minutes. Uh, if you guys can try to wrap it up. And we can show you the results. We will now take the 6-0 balloon. If you have time, we can show it or we can show you the result. That's it. So I think we have switched to another lab. Uh, yeah, after that, we will show you the results. Uh, Dr. Asim, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, can you introduce your uh, case and your team, please? Uh, this yeah, is Dr. Sure. Jabbar and Dr. Suhail moderating the session. We have a panelist, 
Professor Navidullah Ahmed Shakir, Umar Godkin, and Professor Hikmatullah Jan, Professor Tariq Ashraf. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us at Travel Print Institute of Cardiology. Uh, first, I want to introduce my team. I'm Dr. Asim. I'm an international cardiologist at RIC. Next to me is Dr. Asma an international cardiologist. And then we've got our lab assistant, uh, Bilal Zaheer. The machine is a vest. And behind me, uh, our uh, cath nurse, Memuna. We've got anesthesia support, uh, pain, and we've got this, uh, Dr. Pan Lutfi, CVD. So I'm going to introduce the case first. Uh, so this is a 48-year-old. She's got four children. So the family is eight. She's got rheumatic severe aortic stenosis and moderate mitral regurgitation. Uh, so she's got two valve disease, and she's planned for a prosthetic dual valve replacement. But the issue is that that she needs more. She has symptomatic uteroids. And they are symptomatic to the extent that with menorrhagia, her uh, hemoglobin falls down uh, five grams per deciliter. Two or, three, uh, two or three times, she's had to have multiple blood trans transfusions for that. So the gynecologist has seen, and gynecologists from many hospitals have seen, and they've all turned her down because of the high cardiac risk. And uh, so that is the issue at hand, that she needs two prosthetic valves, and she needs warfarin for that. And uh, the symptomatic fibroids would not help that. And the gynecologists are not willing to touch her. So luckily at Ravel Pindi Institute of Cardiology, we have our own gynecology department. And uh, we have our own consultant gynecologist who looks after all the cardiac patients who need uh, gyne or ops uh, procedures and everything which are, which, who are cardiac patients. So. Those patients who are referred to Ravalpind Institute of Cardiology with cardiac issue and gynecology issue come to her and then she selects the patient for us. And then after the MDT, we decide what is the best course of action for that patient. So this patient is selected for uh, uterine uh, fibroid embolization. So since uh, uh, we've started the procedure on time, and uh, so I'm going to take you back through the steps. Uh, so what we've done is we've gone with a six French uh, femoral sheath. And can we go? Yeah, okay. So we've started with the femoral puncture. That's a six French femoral sheath. We've taken a pig tail and with an injector, we've taken the injection so that we can demonstrate nicely the uterine arteries. So, if that, so uterine arteries are branches of the internal iliac artery. So if you see, there are two branches on both sides that come medially, go all the way in, and they are very bendy, they are very tortuous, and they sort of light up a ball-like structure, small branches going to that. If you, if you let it run, please, if you let it run, you'll see the fibroid lightens up. You see that? All yeah, those can see that. The corkscrew type of branches and the, and the blush that you see, this is all uh, fibroid. And it's those two main uterine fibroid artery, arteries that are actually leading to this. So the plan here is that we need to go into the internal iliac artery selectively uh, with, a, uh, with either a 4 French uh, C2 Cobra catheter or we can use a SIM 5 French. Uh, in this case, okay, five, so you need to do that and then you need to go into the uterine artery selectively and if you can go back to the same image please with the pigtail, I'll just give you the theoretical aspect first and then I'll show you what we've done. So go back to the first image. Yeah, yeah, let this one run, please. So our target is to go into the internal iliac artery and then from there selectively go into the uterine artery. So the safest point to do the uh, fibroid embolization is if you look at this uterine artery, it goes down. It has a descending limb. Then it sorts of goes transversely, horizontally, and then it to go up again. This is cervicovaginal branch, which usually comes off from the horizontal segment of this uterine artery. And preferably, we avoid that. And we don't want to embolize that. So the best way to do that is go into this uterine artery and go into that ascending limb. Once you are in that ascending limb, then you can start injecting the PVA particles. I'm still trying to keep uh, saline flush in the micro in the meantime. So uh, then you are in a good position to inject the PVA particles. Uh, so that's exactly what we've done, so how we've gone about it. So go to the next, please. So after the pigtail, we took a overlay, we went in with C2 catheter. So here, the tricky part is to 
selectively go into the uterine artery. So you need to change the regulations from AP to RAO to LAO, wherever, keep going forward, please, wherever you can find a good view to go into the uterine artery. So here, uh, now it's difficult for me to point out to you, but there's a big branch going on laterally, and immediately after that, there is an angulated branch going down. That's actually the uterine artery. So this one is not uterine artery. Okay, next. So we, we tried with the C2 catheter, we tried with the micro catheter, you'll see the micro. So, so then we changed to uh, Judkin Wright, five French catheter, we brought that in. Next view, please. Next view, please. Next view, please. So still, the issue is to go into the right view, to go into the uterine artery. Okay, next view, please. Okay, so here you can see we've selectively taken the uterine artery with the proglate microcatheter. So that's the microcatheter from Teromo. Uh, so with that, we've gone into the uterine artery on the left side. So uterine fibroid has bilateral supplies. So you need to embolize both sides. So we've gone into the left side. Next view, please. This is a selective injection from the microcatheter. Right. Okay, fine. So, uh, where are we? Yeah, so we have the uterine artery. Go next, please. So you can see, now uh, we go to advanced or microcatheter, so it has its own my, uh, wire with it. We've taken the wire forward, and now on this wire, we are going to advance the microcatheter further down. Next view, please. So micro has now gone into the horizontal segment. The wire is in the ascending limb. Next view, please. Uh, Dr. Asim, which I... wire is this? Sorry? Wire. Wire? No, this is uh, the micro catheter's own wire. It comes with a built-in wire. So this is not a separate wire. This is Prograde's own wire. This is not a separate wire that we used, but we used the Peromo 035 bring our uh, Five French or four French catheters down into the uterine artery, but after that, it's all prograde micro catheter with its own wire. There's no separate wire, so this is an overhead wire. So now you can see this is a very nice position where in the ascending limb, we take a contrast injection to see where we are. So we are in a good position. We are miles away from the cervical vaginal branch horizontal segment. Now we have to start injecting the PVO particles. So I'm going to show you how we make the PVO particles. So if I can, so what we do is that doing it. So what I do is if we can focus on my hands, please, with the camera. Let's focus on my hands. So I'm going to open this 20 ml right? You can see that here. Put hand here. So these are PV particles come in different sizes. So this is a 500 to 710 uh, PV particle size from Boston Scientific that I'm going to use now. And I'm going to put one third to half of the PVA particles into this syringe and then put the back in, take it up, remove all the air. Then I'm going to take a three by tap. I'm going to connect the three by tap here on top of this. I'm going to take a 10 ml syringe. This is saline or saline? So I'm going to take 5 ml of saline and mix it with 5 ml of contrast and connect it here and then I'm going to agitate it. So I'm going to mix this with those PVA particles. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's how you agitate it. Once they are well agitated, then we keep taking 2 ml syringe which remove this. Once it is ready, we take a 3 ml lower oxygen, connect it to that, we agitate it further, like this, sorry, the syringe, and then the syringe, you start injecting the PV particles through your micro catheter or a 4 French a C2 catheter, it cuts down well in the ascending plane, even you can do it with that. So what I'm going to show you now is where, what we've done so far and where we have reached up till now. So, you can see we use it in a principal way. So what we do is we do it very slowly like this. With, it's a principal action. What we don't want is 
the contrast to back flow because you don't want the whole uterine artery to close or the pivot part just to go into the internal alveolar artery. Okay, next please. Next view, please. So here we are injecting the PVA particles, and you can see it's still forward flow. It's slow, fertile motion. We are injecting them. They keep going forward. So now you stagnation taking place. You contrast start, has started to hang there. So that shows that the artery is now actually occluding. So I have almost used one and a half bottle of this PVA particle, 500 to 710. It's a large fibroid, which we'll show you later. Um, and so it's taken almost half, one and a half bottle on this side. Next view, please. Next view, please. So you can see here, I've taken a contrast injection to see a DSA, and you can see my contrast is going back now. It's yeah. going backwards, which means that the, the upper artery has glued and now whatever I inject is going to start going towards the back side. So, okay, next view, please. Okay, next view, please. So we've taken a, we've removed the micro, we've taken an injection here, and you can see that this side is beautifully closed. You can only see the uterine artery going down, but you don't see those branches which are going towards the fibroids. Those are now. So after that, I will look the other side as well. So, view, please. So now, selectively engage the internal alveolar artery on the other side. Next view, please. Usually it's much easier with a SIM2 or a C2, but we've got a five French uh, uh, JR hammer, so I'm going to use the same one. Okay, next view, please. Again, now we need to pick the origin of this uh, train artery, and this one has a much bigger supply to the fibroid, actually. This is a huge artery and fibroid which this is flying. Next view, please. Uh, Dr. Asim, can you please uh, wrap up the case a bit quickly because we are running short of yeah. time? Go next. Go next. Keep going next. So, uh, so, so I'm just going to show you how we do it. So you just give pulsatile. This is contrast. Okay. So we've almost occluded the vessel of this side, so I'll show you in a pulse style motion, you'll see how the contrast goes there, and then you can see a bit of bad flash coming. So this means this is occluded, so I'm going to remove my micro now. I'm going to take my plastic up, give me a wire please, and I need a uh, pigtail. So last two minutes, I'll give you the final injection to see how that looks. You give me exchange wire, please. You give me the pit pill, please. Injector ready, please. Okay. Fine. Okay. So let's have the pit pill black, please. Okay. okay, let's have the pictorial piece. So it's a cost effective procedure. Uh, not that difficult to do. All you need to do is take care that you utilize the whole uterine. You need to stay ahead of the cervical vaginal branch. You can use smaller particles as well, but then with those there's more pain during the so you also need good analgesia. And the other thing is that at times you get uh, collateral from the ovarian artery onto the uterine artery, and the, those small can go in the laterals and actually embolize the, you know, and part the uterine artery as well. So the best is these largest particles which actually do not fit to those collaterals can't really infarct the ovarian artery with them. So we've used these large size particles. And I'm going to take the pigtail up to give you the last injection. Okay, wire out please. Show me the top please. Okay. 
That's good. It's ready. This contrast. Let's have the injector, please. Okay, forward. Okay, aspirate, please. Negative. Go negative. Small bubble. Okay, go forward, please. Okay, negative, please. Negative. All right, we are good to go. Center slightly. Slightly move up, please. That's it. Okay, let's do it here. So, ready for DSA? Inject, please. Great. So now you can see. It's very good pre result. You can see. Yeah. So if you can All see right. the pre and post procedure result, the fibroid supply gone. The uterine arteries are still in the lower part, and there's no fibroid supply at all. So, alhamdulillah. Uh, so that's all from my side. If any questions, uh, As I'm Asan, this is uh, this is you know Suhail. It's, it's a very very good case, and you are very lucky to be at the institute, uh, you know, cardiac center where you have OBGYN service. Otherwise, if if I'm a cardiologist and I want to do it in any other setting, uh, I will be feeling a lot of uh, resistance uh, from uh, you know different circles, whether it's IR or vascular surgery. Uh, so it's a great case. Uh, again, we can all learn from each other. I also see doc Dr. Irfan Luthi in your background. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the theme that we should have a team-based approach to it. <coughs> thank you so much. Uh, thank but, you uh, for your comments. Uh, thank you, Dr. Asim. Uh, but the Guyani people will not like it because, because you are uh, doing the cerebral, the carotid, and now you have started the fibroid uh, intervention as well. So, but it is a great blessing that you, we have. Willing to operate on her and she is DVR. So these people do have to live. And if there is something we can offer with training, of course, everything needs training. Uh, in my initial uh, training abroad, I did go and learn some of abroad and then I asked Dr. Pan Luthi standing here to stand behind me in the initial few cases. So I had an IR with me and I think that's the, it's a, it's a teamwork uh, that makes the program successful but these people do have a right to live. So for the non-affording patients, RIC offers everything free of charge, made carotid, peripheral, stroke, primary uh, uh, so we uh, can we switch to the other room? Thank you, uh, Dr. Asim, for the lovely case. Thank and you very much. Thank you. Enjoy the conference. See uh, you tomorrow. Can, can you uh, go to the other room to see the final result of uh, the, the subclevian stenting or ballooning? Uh, if not, then uh, we will have the concluding remarks from uh, the panelists if they want. Uh, and uh, Professor Ra, he is still uh, there uh, with us. Can you hear us, Professor Ra? Yes, I can hear. Uh, is there any questions, Will, from Professor Ra? Uh, uh, Professor Ra, uh, when if you uh, uh, stuck in uh, SFA CTO, uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about uh, how to do it uh, retrograde puncture? I can. Uh, which view to use and uh, SFA retrograde puncture? Retrograde puncture. The, 
the uh, most good basic basic you know concept is you need to prepare the uh, good micro function uh, mostly uh, uh, frequently using function is uh, uh, depends on the patient muscle um, volume. The distal, uh, distal SFA puncture will be uh, requiring mostly 7 cm needle. So the, the co company they provide good micro puncture needle. So 7 cm, the distal uh, below knee puncture 5 cm. But sometimes the bulky uh, femoral area, sometimes you need a nine centimeter needle. So some cases uh, you need the longer needle, but usual uh, distal SF puncture, uh, two also on a view, uh, at least one view. The key little access is uh, at least one uh, oblique view or the AP view you need to in single line with one needle line to the SFA line, at least one needle you can uh, matching uh, single line, then do the going to the single line access. Then depths can be assessed by the one also on a different angle so that you can assess the depth. However, uh, many of them have the classified SFA, so generally just without contrast, you can see. Either you can do the fluoroscopic guided uh, access or the ultrasound guided access. And many physicians, by the uh, collateral angiography, you can easily mapping by the angio guided little puncture. That's uh, not difficult. One mapping to the another uh, monitor, then do the easy puncture. All the uh, wire mapping in the full through man, the contrast to the, this uh, relative location assessment by the full through man wiring to the just the puncture. Uh, once you have some learning curve, that will not be difficult. So, just saving time instead of the, uh, the, the costly the reentry device. Uh, okay, thank you, Professor Ra, uh, for your time. And uh, I know it is 11 p.m. in Korea, and uh, we are uh, uh, we are about to uh, end our session. But uh, we will see the the, the other case, uh, the subclavian, if to see their final result, what they have done so far. I, that's very. Yes, yes it's very exciting. Okay, so we are live. Uh, so we have class. one minute, two minutes. Okay, uh, let's uh, go back. We did some dilations. Go back uh, for the first dilation. We first dilated with a go back, go back. Uh, so balloon catheter. Yes. yes. Here. Next. Go forward. Go forward. Next. Okay. Yes, this is trio balloon catheter, and afterwards we dilated with six o balloon catheter. We do not have here five o balloon catheter with six. Next. Next one. Next. Next one. Yes. And as it's the challenge. So, as you can see, we have recoil there. We have an under expansion, so we decided to take a cutting balloon there. We have. 5 O balloon catheter from Boston Scientific. We had a marker there with a needle and we dilated with 5 O by 20 millimeter cutting catheter, uh, balloon catheter. Next. Next. It's relatively well expanded. Next. Next. And finally, we took 6 O balloon catheter. And the last, oh, the last picture. So th th this is a Mustang a CTO balloon or just plain balloon? We use uh, Poba plain balloons and cutting balloons. Okay. We have now uh, a 
small dissection there. Uh, it's not flow limiting, and uh, we were discussing with our colleagues should we place a, a short step there or leave it like this and wait, wait and see approach. What do you advise us? Yeah. It, uh, this seems like Maybe not a flow limit. limiting dissection. So, I mean, I would take another shot, uh, you know, in a couple of seconds, and if you still see good flow with no flow, uh, flow limitation, then I don't think we will need to stand here. So, yes, uh, we will take a picture for you. Yes. Mm. I think uh, it has worsened. If you have a thrombus there, it will. Uh, yeah, it has worsened. Probably you will need a stent. So you either need a stent or you can uh, take a balloon, a 6 0 millimeter short balloon, and. Uh, inflate it and just leave it for two to three minutes and then take another picture before you put a stand in because it's a very highly mobile area and I would really like to avoid stand unless it's really, really needed. So I would uh, do the prolonged balloon, balloon inflation here for two to three minutes at low pressure. Okay, we did this, we did this but we will uh, do it again and we will decide after that. Okay. So, so you have already done the prolonged inflation? How long? How long? How long? Four or five minutes. Five minutes. If they did the prolonged yes. inflation for five minutes. Yeah. And what, what was the balloon size? Uh, what was the balloon it was size? Small. It should go at least uh, one to one with, with the vessel wall. I mean, it looks like. Yeah, it uh, has to be low pressure and prolonged inflation. Prolonged mm -hmm. inflation. And if it is a six, six millimeter balloon, it has a uh, six millimeter vessel, it has to be six, a six millimeter balloon. Um, uh, again, and, at low pressure, four to, four to six atmosphere. Uh, uh, you may need multiple time prolonged inflation, five minutes, then wait to see, and you can do it again and again. Uh, what was the size of balloon for prolonged inflation? Size that you six millimeter, uh, and uh, we did dilation with six atmosphere with the nominal uh, pressure. For three minutes or five? We can try it once more if you want. Uh, we can dilate four or five minutes and decide. Hmm. Yeah, Six over the, okay. if it is the uh, dissection is healed with prolonged inflation, that will be good. Uh, the area is mobile and we don't have that uh, supera like stents in Pakistan, I think. Yes, supera could be better here. It's, uh, we do not stand fracture. Yes, good. Maximum five atmospheres. In fact, it's not an atherosclerotic tissue, it's fibrotic tissue. We had severe recoil with this balloon, uh, cutting balloon, uh, cut the uh, uh, fibrotic tissue. So, yes. so this is uh, 6 mm balloon, 6 O. 6 mm, yes. 6 O by 150. 50. 50. 50. Let's look at the watch. Uh, the timer is on. It's about 34 seconds. Supera would be better here if we are obliged to implant the stand. And the patient feels pain after five atmosphere. Four or five atmosphere. Are they still with us? Sir, are you hearing us? Yeah, we, we are with you. Okay. okay. Thank you. We have uh, four to five more minutes. Seven, uh, seven, so we'll 120. See how, how you do in four or five minutes. Yeah, and we are if already looks good, great. Uh, if not, then we are going to leave you guys alone and do, do your case, finish your case, whatever the way you want. Okay. And you'll probably tell us the result uh, maybe later or tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, we'll yeah. see how it goes in the next four or five minutes. 640. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. 640. Uh, 7, 120, 860. 840. 840, what are you doing? As short as possible. Yes.
Six forty is available. But forty may be uh, undersized. Okay. The diameter of the vessel is six millimeters, so we should place seven or eight. Mm. Shelf expandable must be chosen one or two millimeter bigger than the index size, not one to one. But yeah. Terra, for Terra, you must choose one to one. One to one. If you choose bigger, it extends. It it becomes longer. Yes. This is for Sphera, the start where you can decide the beginning, but you cannot decide where it finishes. Yes. It's like uh, very interesting. That's what's with the ca carotid stern, really. If uh, the vessel is smaller and you are putting a bigger stern, then it will elongate. Carotid both stand and both saver stand. Mm. The best stand, the sizing is important. They extend. Yes. So then you, you are surprised it becomes very long. If you take very big, bigger than the vessel, mm -hmm. it's better to choose the size according to the transform diameters. Yes. ACT, how much is it? We are waiting. Did you get it? Sir, sir, ACT did you get it? Okay, let's go. Let's give it to me. Three. It's about three and a half minutes. So we are finishing. finishing. Uh, we, we have only two minutes. RIC, can you hear us? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, we have only two minutes. We can see your case okay. later on or tomorrow if it is not finished okay. within two minutes. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> yeah, you have to be patient inside. when you are doing peripheral intervention. Minutes, four minutes. Okay. So let's wait for the best. Hope for the best. Wire ki tip dikhani thi yet. Let's take a picture. Normal picture or DSA? Normal. Yeah. I think it looks much better this time, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I think it is acceptable. Yes, we will take the last picture with the subsection on geograph. Is it ready? Yes. Okay, we will leave, leave it like this, if you agree with that. I totally yeah. agree with that. It, uh, totally you know, the agree dissection with you. is pretty much gone. There's a good flow distally. Um, again, this is the area we would uh, like to avoid any you know, stenting. So this is, a, this is a great case. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, uh, thank, uh, thank you very much, the chairperson, the presenter, Professor A, Professor Ambar Malik, who was uh, on virtual, uh, Dr. Tariq Siddiqui. Professor Hikmatullah Jan, uh, Professor Irfan, Professor Elmis, and all the audience, and Dr. Suhail. Thank you very much. Uh, with this, we conclude uh, the session. Thank you very much.